Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. And uh, I'm parked in front of my apartment right now. And I just did an Uber uh, shift. As you can see, there's the Uber sticker right there. So those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I talk a lot about my Lexus IS250, which I have. But um, I'm going to tell you now that for those of you that don't know, which is probably a lot of you, well, now you do. I have a Toyota Corolla that I use for Uber. And here's an exterior shot of it. I don't want to actually go out right now and do a video around it, but uh, I'll just put in a picture here. Alrighty, so I'm going to talk about Uber and uh, my experience with it. I've been driving for Uber um, kind of a mixed. I started off full time and then now I do it only part time. But uh, yeah, I drove this car. Um, I got this car in 2018, late 2018. And for a period of about like three months, actually, I did it full time and then tapered down to part time. And so actually, I'm going to leave this car pretty soon and talk about my experience with Uber and if it was worth it. If it's still worth it in 2021 and moving onward to 2022. So um, I'm just going to continue uh, this video uh, upstairs in my apartment because I don't want to stay in here. It's going to get fairly warm. All right, I'm in my apartment now and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Uber. I'm not going to make this a very, very long video. I mean, I have a lot to say about Uber, um, a lot of negatives and a lot of positives, but I'll try to keep it short under 10 minutes because I just don't want to have the video go on and on. But anyways, um, so is Uber worth it in 2021? What do I think about Uber? You know, um, it's very, I, I have to say this, uh, driving for Uber, for me, and this is specifically for me, I'm pretty sure other drivers do it. There are many drivers that do it full time and that's their main source of income. But for me, it's a side gig. I like it as a side gig. Now I drive, you know, I'm pretty sure full-time drivers are going to laugh at me when I say this, but I drive about like 12 hours a week. Yeah, you know, say that to an Uber driver that does it up to 60 hours a week. And yes, they do exist. There are many drivers out there, certainly not all Uber drivers. In fact, I think if we were to look at statistically, perhaps half of the Uber drivers do it part-time and the other half do it full-time, 40 hours plus. But anyways, to the drivers that do it for a very long time, uh, that do it full time are probably gonna are laughing at their face. Uh, they're probably laughing at me right now, considering I only do it for twelve hours a week, sometimes less. But in, in my case, I, I have a full time job already, so there's no reason for me to do it full time. For me, it is a good side gig. And okay, so maybe this video might be about people doing it part time because they already have a full time job. On my opinion, if you want to make extra money, you know, go ahead, do it. I think Uber is fine. I do think that the pay could be a little bit better um, because Uber's rates are not particularly great. But, um, you know, uh, when you put it in the perspective of doing it part-time like I do, then it's all right, you know. I think the pay is okay. I mean, it's definitely not anything extravagant. You're not going to get rich off of Uber, you know. Um, but it's definitely good if you want to do Uber as a side gig and, you know, you want to need you may need money to pay bills here or there um you just need extra money in your pocket it's great for that i think uber is an excellent sidekick but i firmly believe that it shouldn't be a full-time thing um because the pay just isn't quite so good i mean sure there are drivers out there that probably drive on you know they they know what they're doing so they know how to make a lot of money because they drive on a specific time of day when the demand is high um they drive when it's surging and that's great for them, you know what I mean? But there's, aside from the rate of pay that you get from Uber, there are other reasons why me personally, and this is just my opinion, I wouldn't do it full time. And so this is the big one. The reason why I wouldn't do it full time is because the amount of mileage you put on your car. Now, as you know, as I said in the car when I was sitting downstairs there, I have two cars, a Lexus IS250, which is my personal car. And then I am actually still financing the, uh, Toyota um, Corolla 2018, but I am not, and I say this again, I am not underwater on the loan on that car. In fact, I own, I have way more equity in it. If I were to sell the Corolla today, I would profit 
ten thousand dollars because I only owe about like a little um, a little under four a little under five thousand dollars left on the Toyota Corolla. So and can so so I could sell the Corolla and as of right now cars are very high in demand in late 2021 because of the pandemic. Point being is I'm not going to be underwater on the I'm not going to lose money um, from that car because I put a large down payment on the car when I got it in 2018. So I'm not worried about the financing aspect of it. That's fine. Um, okay, so what do I say? Saying mileage. Yes, mileage. You put a lot of miles on your car, um, which translates, of course, uh, to decreasing the value of the car, depreciation as it's called. Now, my car, my 2018 Corolla, has about 43,000 miles on it, and uh, that's pretty good considering I started doing Uber in 2018, late 2018, that is. And it's because I was on and off. There was a time, three months, two months or so, I was doing it full time, and then I stopped for like so and so months didn't drive for Uber at all. It just stayed in my driveway and I would turn on the car so that the battery won't go bad, uh, so the car won't break down. Um, so I did that. And so right now, 2018 model, 44, 43, 44,000 miles. It's actually still very, uh, for a Toyota, it's still very new. It's still quite, quite solid, I'll say. Um, but if you're a full-time driver and you were to get, say, you, you were to get a new Corolla today, or even back then in 2018. Full-time drivers, you know, going talking about mileage again, you put at least between 40, maybe even more than that, between 50 to 80,000 miles on your car per year, full-time driving 40 hours, between 40 hours plus per week, basically. And yeah, that's a lot of mileage. That, and that's probably just including the, uh, the miles you do for ride share. Um, not including personal miles, the miles that you drive yourself to say, go to the supermarket, go to the mall, uh, whatever that is. So in my case, it's, it's a very unique situation because I only drive my Lexus if I'm gonna, you know, go to, um, if I'm gonna go to say to my sister's house, I'm gonna go to the grocery store, I'm gonna go to the Target, uh, I'm just gonna go visit friends. You know, that is my personal car. I never use that for rideshare. For the 2018 Corolla, I use primarily for rideshare, and as I said before, I only work 12 hours a week now. I don't rack on a lot of miles on that car. I'm not one of those drivers that put that put 60, 50, between 80,000 miles on my car. So uh, the wear and tear, I mean, there's always gonna be wear and tear in your car, you know, if you're driving it, but it's not gonna be as severe. It's, you're not gonna have to change your oil and change your tires and do all that maintenance work, you know, often. Full-time driver, you have to worry about that often. You're going to go through tires, oil, oil changes, you know, whatever um, mechanical problems you may have with your car. You're going to have to deal with that in a much shorter interval because of how many miles you're driving. Okay, so um, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but I hope I'm not. I was talking about the mileage. Um, what else makes it worth it and not worth it? Let's see what I can say about Uber. Um, so the pay... Yeah, I think I'll talk about the pay a little bit. And as I said, you're not gonna get rich off Uber, okay? This is not something that you're not gonna make, you, you know, you're, even if you're a full-time driver, I feel like, I personally feel that drivers should get paid more, you know? Uber, you know, I, I, I've taken passengers and I've seen it, you know, I've done a comparison with one of my passengers. I picked someone up from the airport, or no, sorry, all the way around, I was going to the airport. They paid $50 for the trip. And I showed them, um, because we were talking about this, a passenger was interested about, you know, how we're getting paid and all that. Um, he was intrigued by this. And I showed him how much I was getting paid uh, versus how much he was paying for the fare. And the Uber takes a huge chunk. You know, I, I, I'd like to say if I have to put out a percentage of how much they take, it's probably like 40%, maybe, I don't know, something like that. It's just a big chunk. And I feel like, uh, Uber drivers should get paid more, especially since, you know, gas prices are higher now. And that, as, as wages go up, which I'm sure, I mean, wages are always going to go up. You know, minimum wage in California will eventually go up. But it's not right that the fares that uh, drivers are getting is remaining stagnant. I think that should go up as well as, um, as, when, as, well as wages go up. So that's something, that's my biggest cons with Uber. That's my biggest complaint right there. It's just that they just don't pay enough. And if you're a full-time driver, you know, I feel you should get paid more. You know, that's, 
it's a no-brainer there. You know, I, I think, but because Uber, um, they are a public company now, they have to impress their uh, investors, you know, they have to show that they're, the money, is, the company's making money, but they lose money every quarter, by the way. But, you know, it's uh, sadly, it's become a situation where, you know, Uber's a hit, and mi hit or miss. It's kind of, I don't want to say it's not worth it, I don't want to say it's worth it. It's kind of where somewhere in between. And it entirely depends on what kind of driver you are. I do this part-time and it's fine. You know, 12 hours is nothing. I don't get tired from driving 12 hours a week. It's it's good extra money in my pocket. You know, if I want to go get sushi with friends, I'll drive for two hours. Here in the market in San Diego, I get paid approximately, you know, uh, maybe $25 an hour, 20, 25. Um, of course, you have to pay for your own gas, so that's, you know, expenses. Uber's not going to cover expenses. Another cons right there. You know, so if you're going to drive for Uber, I'm going to tell you, get a Corolla, get a Prius, get something that's very good on gas. I would never drive my Lexus IS250 because it uses premium and only gets like 20 miles per gallon on the city and then like 24 or 25 on the highway. You need a gas-efficient car to do Uber. Um, but even, even then, you know, you're paying for your own gas, you know, any kind of repairs, it's coming from your pocket. So I feel that the combination of Uber not paying full-time drivers enough or just drivers in general enough and having them, you know, the drivers having to worry about, you know, changing, say, their brakes, their tires, it gets very expensive. And to, a, to an extent, you know, you might be breaking even if you're driving uh, full time for Uber. You know, you're not really making any money. You know, you're, because you're putting all of the rep costly repairs into the car um, because of the wear and tear. So yeah, um, it's a very very mixed bag for me. Uh, I think it's okay as a side hustle. It's great as a side hustle, but it's oh, as a full time thing, it's all right. You just have to be prepared, and you have to think about that. You have to realize if you're going to do Uber full time, you know, it's there's a lot of stuff you have to worry about in terms of the wear and tear on the car. Uh, of course, gas, paying for gas. And I'm going to finish this video with one thing, actually. And one, this is a big one. And that is um, taxes. You really have to know what to do uh, in regards to taxes. What I do is I have an app called Stride, which measures your business miles. And this is what you need to do if you're an Uber driver. Uh, the moment you turn on the app, go to Stride and turn on Track My Miles. Because what Uber will do is they will only measure engaged miles, meaning the passenger, the moment the passenger gets in your car and the moment he or she leaves the car. You do not, uh, it doesn't calculate or doesn't measure the miles in between passengers. You know, if you have to drive five miles to your next passenger, Uber's not going to count that, but Stride and other third-party apps will. And it's very important because at the end of each tax year, it's going to be a huge deduction to do your mileage. You could do your gas. You can't do both. It has to be either your gas mileage or your, I'm sorry, your gas expenses or your gas mile or your, your gas expenses or your mileage rate. Sorry about that. But yes, it, it's going to be something that that you have to worry about at the end of the year because those are going to be two very large tax write-offs that will potentially save you hundreds if you're a part-time driver or thousands if you're a full-time driver so that's something you know to keep 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 in mind you know um uber they like to say that we're independent contractors i personally don't think that because we don't set our own rates you know we still get penalized for like certain things um you know they don't like it when we cancel too many trips uh, or we just don't accept any pings so we're not independent contractors i hate to say that I, they like to say that we are but we're just not we're not independent but um you still gotta kind of like treat it that way if you're a if you're a driver part-time or full-time because you will have to worry about taxes at the end of the year so in a way maybe it's kind of in between i would like to think i would like to think as ride share as being in between you're not quite an employee you're not quite an independent contractor. You're kind of right in the middle. Um, so yeah, there's that. And one thing I want to talk about Uber as well, and people have asked me this question, are people, uh, are passengers kind of crazy? And like, do you get really, do you get people that are like, 
really intimidating and they're very violent or whatever. And I have to say um, this um, before I actually end the video. It depends on your market. Uh, here in San Diego, I think it's very, people here are very friendly. Um, yes, I have driven at night past 12 a.m. And that is the uh, time that people are leaving the bars and they're already intoxicated. And, you know, I thank God, thank goodness, I don't, I haven't had anyone throw up in my car yet. I mean, it, I mean that, that's terrible. And if that were to happen, you know, the driver could, of course, charge the passenger like 300, 400 bucks or something, to, kind of like a cleaning fee, basically. But you wouldn't want that to happen anyway. And you wouldn't want that to happen. You know, it's, it's a disgusting thought, someone throwing up in your backseat or potentially on you, you know. Um, so to, uh, when it comes to passengers, it depends on your market. It depends on when you drive, of course, as I just gave you that example. Um, San Diego is a very friendly city. Um, so for me, I would, I'd say that it's, 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 it's worth it because no one, I don't really have any problems with people and I'm a very uh, people oriented individual. So, um, I don't have any problem talking and connecting with people and reading people's body language. And that includes like whether I could tell if they don't want to talk to me or if I could tell if they really want to engage in the conversation with me. So, you know, um, it could just be my personality. Um, and maybe I make people feel at ease or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, I don't really get anyone particularly crazy. I haven't gotten anyone crazy. Um, I've had people that had bad days, but I was able to de kind of diffuse the situation by not really talking to them, you know, just basically just being quiet and taking them from point A to point B. Um, so yeah, uh, when it comes to the passengers, nothing wrong there. Uh, if you do get someone violent, then that's very unfortunate. Um, you know, sometimes on the news you hear situations of like uh, passengers like attacking their drivers. So um, that can happen. Um, and sadly, I think it's actually increasing. Uh, those incidents are increasing now. But definitely, um, I still like to believe that that's a rare thing. And it's not, you know, you're not going to... If you're a new driver you're not you're not going to get attacked the first week or the first day you know um word of advice if you just want to like make if you have time to drive in the rush drive in the morning when people are going to work you know people that are going to work and going to the airport are not going to give you any problems they just want to get to where you know they just want to go to work basically or go to the airport or wherever they're going in the morning and same applies to the um afternoon time when people are going from work to home. So the only maybe I could say the risky, the only risky time of driving is definitely going to be the drunks. And you want to watch out for that because there, there can be aggressive drunks. And so, but for the most part, you know, if you drive on certain times of the day, as I was saying, morning, afternoon, rush hour, you're not going to have any problems. You know, it's just uh, the only thing about that that probably sucks is that you're going to be stuck in traffic. But, you know, if you're doing it part-time like I am, it's no big deal. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have to say about Uber. I don't know how long this video has been going. Um, but anyways, if it's uh, been 20 minutes, forgive me. Or maybe it's 30 minutes, I have no idea. But Uber is definitely good. Uh, um, the point being of this video is Uber is okay. It's not a great, it's not a great uh, kind of gig to have and it's not terrible. You know, it's in between. It really depends on what kind of driver you are. Uh, there's a lot of factors uh, to determine whether or not you're going to hate it or not. But um, that's all I have to say about uh, Uber. I do hope to uh, catch you again in the next video. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you are an Uber driver, let me know below if, uh, if, you, uh, if you like Uber, if you dislike it, or... You love it? I don't know. Just tell me what you think about it. Um, that's it for now. Take care. Goodbye. And God bless.